My name is Beverly Bruce and I'm a project coordinator for the Digital Systems Group. I came into work, it was a typical day, and about 11.30 I felt really hungry and so I went into the kitchen and took the leftovers out of the fridge. It was a, a, a sandwich. I remember stopping for a moment to look down Burrard Street and I was admiring the view and, and I thought, oh, I have to get back to work. And I make my way to the hallway, I'm walking, and, and so when I got to the door, I need to swipe my access card to get through, so I shoved the rest of the sandwich in my mouth. I tried to swallow, I thought I was swallowing some of the food, and um, I clearly swallowed it all and it blocked my airway and uh, I felt pain immediately. I went out into the passageway and down the passage to see what was going on and there I saw Bev on her knees crouched over and it became obvious to me that she was choking. Um, there were a number of people standing up, there were a number of people sort of slightly frozen in place. There were a few folks that were yelling to call 911 and, and, and somebody was yelling, does anybody know the Heimlich? Without a second thought, I th said I better do something about this. I learned about the Heimlich maneuver in first aid training, but I wasn't very effective. I had all the right moves, but I wasn't able to dislodge what was in Bev's mouth, and she was continuing to choke. Time is ticking, and um, I'm starting to groan now, and I'm starting to panic, and the realization of what it, of, of what is happening is starting to click with me. As I was walking towards her, Warren actually ran by me and grabbed um, Beverly off the floor and started doing the Heimlich Maneuver. My name is Warren Yao and I'm General Manager of Projects uh, attached to Base Metals Group. I, I started the Heimlich. It um, was not like you see on the film. You're supposed to give it one thrust and whatever's stuck in the in, in the passage is supposed to pop out. It didn't happen that way. At one point, a small piece of what was lodged in her throat came out and everybody stopped. And she looked at me and, and it was clear that it wasn't all out and she was still unable to breathe. So I think in my best mom voice, I told everybody they couldn't stop and they needed to keep going. I figured my best place was to go into Beverly's face so she could see a friendly face and, and try to encourage her to help Warren, help get the whatever was lodged in her throat out. Well, at first I didn't, I, I wasn't really sure what was happening. I remember her rubbing my back and consoling me and talking to me, but eventually I clued in and I thought, don't know where this is coming from. I'm gonna die at work. And um, yeah, it was, it was surreal. I thought, I'm, I'm choking and I can't breathe. And so she was looking at me like, like, this is it. So I screamed at, at, at Warren, who was working very hard, to try a few more times. So I, I just kept going until, at, and I don't know how long it took, it might have been two minutes, three minutes. Um, and then the whole piece of what was lodged in her throat came out and she collapsed to the floor. Yeah, they picked me up and placed me in my chair and sat me down and and then, uh, you know, the first aid attendant came and the ambulance eventually came and, and I was taken to the emergency room at St. Paul's Hospital. I just want to uh, convey my gratitude to warn you. We had a, a great relationship before this happened, and I really do consider my coworkers family. I think it made our group a little tighter and a little stronger. I think we all appreciate that we're a family here at work and at tech, we take care of each other. So I think there was a reflection on how seriously we all take it. Um, and so that was a very good positive. It's not just the physical part of uh, intervention, but there is, uh, I think, comfort that needs to be provided and um, uh, being a friend, uh, seeing if, there, uh, if there's anything you can do to support emotionally. Uh, After the event, I realized that I should redo and, and update my first aid training. 
So I was very pleased when the company arranged for first aid training for, for all of PDG. I think one of the things that this incident has shown us with an incident of, of this nature is that even with the established protocols, it can be very difficult to achieve the wanted outcome you know, in clearing that airway. Following this incident, we searched for a new level of control to help with choking related events and we found LifeVac. LifeVac is a very simple suction device designed to help clear an airway obstruction in combination with the standard choking protocols. I think a tool like LifeVac would actually help people feel more comfortable in responding and getting in there and really truly helping. Even one life saved with a tool like this uh, is a great outcome uh, and if anyone in amongst the tech family ever finds themselves in need, uh, we want this tool to be you know, at, at, the, at hand, at the ready to, to help uh, support someone. Even after you have the training, uh, I, I think you have to be in a mindset where if you see a situation, you just have to do it and uh, don't hesitate. Maybe a little bit of difference that could change the outcomes. At the end of the day, what's more important is that someone steps up and acts. The safety culture here is top notch. But I'm so proud of tech for doing that. Little old me, you know, and taking this opportunity to do that. I want to say thank you to tech. I want to thank you, say thank you to laws and the whole health and safety, you know, department and you guys. And um, it makes a big difference. Thank you.